Okay, now what about, what about the cosine function? So let's look at f of x equals cosine of x. Well, how would that work? Well, let's look at cosine. You might, in fact, guess right out of that get-go that the derivative might be sine. So in fact, let's just draw a little picture of that to see if, if that's a good guess or not. Because if the derivative of sine was cosine, it seems reasonable that to guess that the derivative of cosine is sine. I think that's a great guess, by the way. Did you make that guess? I did. So there's the sine function that keeps going, of course. And let's see if that's a good guess. Because remember, if that's really the derivative, that should emulate the activity of the slope of the tangent line. This is tangent to my face. Oop. Okay. <clears throat> so we start up here. We can see that the slope of the tangent line is 0 because that tangent is horizontal. And that's good because look, the value there is 0. But what happens as I move? As I move, I see my values are actually now sloped negatively. So in fact, these should be negative, and that's a problem because this is now going up. It's positive. These should be negative, 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 negative for a while, and then be less and less and less negative until we get back to 0. So this should actually dip below, dip below, and then come back up to 0. And then what happens here? Well, then I start to go up, 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 but still negative. I'm sorry, I'm, now I'm 0, but now I go up, 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 I'm positive. So now I should be going up, 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 positive until I get to here. And then I start to level off again. So I should be going up, 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 and then down until I get to here, back at 0. So this is far from the answer. Instead, what I want to do is I want the thing to drop first, and then I want it to be 0, and then I want it to it'd be 0 right here, and then I want it to start to go up again until I'm back to 0 here. Well, that's not the sign, but notice if I flip the picture, it actually does do what I want. Because notice here I start to drop. The slopes there are negative, and these values are negatively valued. And then right here, my slope it turns out to actually be negative 1, which is this point right here. And then afterwards, they still are negative, but they're increasing more and less and less negative until I get to here. And here, the slope is 0. It's horizontal, and that's 0. And then the slopes become positive again. Great, I'm going up, right? Positive values, positive values, positive values. And then I come down again, and over here I land at 0. So this seems to be the right curve. This was the sine curve. What do I get if I just flip all the values? Well, I take all the positive values, make them negative. Take all the negative values, make them positive. So I'm basically just taking the negative of this function. If I take the negative of this function, it just flips it. So in fact, we see that a good guess for the derivative of cosine is negative sine, because I've got to go down first and then up. And it turns out that's actually the right answer. So the derivative of cosine is not sine, but is instead negative sign. And you can see that by thinking about how the slopes are changing. And you can really see that, that picture. So in fact, what we've just discovered is that the derivative of cosine is a little bit more surprising than you may have thought. We see it's negative sine of x. So that's sort of a little surprise there. Trig functions are always, always there, filled with surprises. OK, now what about the tangent? Well, now we're actually armed to, to study the tangent function. Because remember, once you know everything about sine and cosine, you are done. Let's look at the tangent together. f of x equals the tangent of x. And I want to take the derivative of that, so what do I do? Well, I don't know what the derivative is. That's what I'm trying to figure out. But I do know that this equals sine of x over cosine of x. That was that one of those first identities that we discovered in the previous review section. So I can actually use the quotient rule here. Right? Remember the quotient rule, it's a little chant. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So let's actually perform that right now. And what do I see? I see the bottom, so that's cosine of x, multiplied by the derivative of the top. And we just saw the derivative of sine is, you can see it right there, cosine. And now where am I in the quotient rule? We can actually start all over and practice. It's the bottom times the derivative of the top. OK, minus, there's my chant, the top times the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of cosine? We just saw it's negative sine. And it's all divided by the bottom squared. So cosine squared x. Remember, that's how I write cosine of x all squared. I put the little 2 there. That means cosine x multiplied by cosine x, cosine x squared. OK, well, let's simplify this a little bit. Um, cosine x times cosine x, well, that's a cosine x squared. 
So cosine squared x. And a minus and a minus make a plus. And then I have sine times sine, that's sine squared x, all over cosine squared x. And well, that looks pretty complicated, but I guess that's the answer. Can we simplify that at all? Well, yeah, because remember the fundamental fact that sine squared x plus cosine squared x always equals a constant number 1. No matter what x is, this we saw, this is followed from the Pythagorean theorem, if you remember in the review section we just had, this is just a number 1. So in fact, I can simplify this dramatically to just 1 over cosine squared x. And what is 1 over cosine? You may remember that's actually secant. So instead of 1 over cosine squared, I could write this as secant squared x. And we just proved that the derivative of tangent is actually secant squared x. So we can come back here and report on this little list we have here that the derivative of tangent, just using the quotient rule and these two facts, didn't have to memorize anything, is equal to secant squared x. What about the other trig functions, by the way? Like what about, what about cosecant? Well, if you want to find the derivative of cosecant, what would you do? Well, you'd remember that cosecant is equal to 1 over, 1 over sine. So if you wanted cosecant x, you remember that equals 1 over sine. And now you can use the quotient rule. Bottom times root of the top minus the top times root of the bottom over the bottom squared, and you can see exactly what it equals. So I'll let you try those other, um, those other functions, those ones that are not the stars but just the supporting cast. But you can now find the derivatives of any, of any functions, of any trig functions, rather. So now we can take derivatives of trig functions. Terrific. How about exponential functions? How about logarithm functions? Well, everyone hates logs and exponentials. So up next, we'll first actually do a review of the very important and natural functions of logs and exponentials, which actually capture the spirit of growth and growth rates. And then we'll take a look at the derivatives of those things. OK, I'll see you over in the logs. Bye.